In this video, I'm going to talk about preparation of epoxide. There is two main ways for synthesis of the epoxide. The first method, we are going to use peroxy acid or we call it per acid. And the second method is using the halohydrin intermediate. First, I would like to start with per acid. The first reaction is using peroxy acid or sometimes we call it just per acid this is the general formula for peroxy acid or sometimes we just show it by RCO3H if we use a per acid and react it with the alkene we have epoxide ring so one double one plus any type of per acid can give us epoxy Peroxy acid normally they are not very stable and most of the time we can synthesize them during our reaction. There is few of them that are industrially available. One of the most famous of the per acid that we normally use it in this reaction is this acid. The name for this per acid is methyl chloro peroxy benzoic acid or we just use the first letter for each word and we call it in the chemical reaction normally as a MCPBA. So whenever we see MCPBA, it means we have a peroxy acid. So here is some example. Let's say we have this alkene and we react it with MCPBA. To writing the answer, we just need to convert this double bond to the single bond and instead of double bond, we need to put one epoxy ring. The addition of oxygen to the double bond has seen mechanism. So it means the oxygen at from one side of the molecule. So always these two CO bond, they should be at the same side of the molecule. Because of this, the stereochemistry of the alkene, it will remain in the product. This means if we have for example, this alkene, it is trans because these two metal, they are on two different sides of the molecule. When we treat with the per acid, like MCPBA, oxygen will add to the double bond from one side. So in our product, still these two metal, they should be trans, like the reactants. And these two hydrogen, they are also trans respecting each other. So this is trans and our product is also trans. If you use cis alkene, then our product also will be cis. So this is cis alkene and this epoxide is also cis. When we have cis alkene, our product has a symmetry line. So it is a meso compound. But when we have trans alkene, our compound doesn't have any symmetry line. So we will have two enantiomer as a product. In general, when we have cis alkene and syn addition, our product is meso. When we have trans alkene and we also have anti addition, our product also is meso. The other conditions we will have two enantiomer as a product. Let's see what is the mechanism for this reaction. In this reaction, alkene is a source of electron, it's nucleophile, and per acid is our electrophile then the pi orbitals from the alkenes can interact with this oxygen that i'm showing by different color here so then this is the sequence of reaction we know the single oxygen oxygen bond is very weak because 
the repulsion between this lone pair. So after addition of this electron to the oxygen, this bond will break. And then this double bond absorbs this hydrogen. And at the end, the electron from OH is come back to the another carbon of double bond. All these as steps happen at the same time and they are simultaneously. So that's the reason oxygen always should attach to the double bonds from one side of molecule. And at the end, we have our epoxy plus carboxylic acids. Let's see more example for this reaction. At the beginning, we may don't realize this reaction is epoxidation reaction. But we need to remember, most of the peroxy acid, they are not stable. We cannot buy it. We should prepare it in the lab. The method for preparation of the peroxy acid is reaction of carboxylic acid and hydrogen peroxide. So whenever we see these two together, one carboxylic acid and hydrogen peroxide, it means peroxy acid. So combination of these two, it produces peroxy acetic acid. Then we know we should convert double bond to the epoxy. And also there is two metal here because oxygen come and attach from one side to the molecule. So then these two metal, they should be in another side. It doesn't matter we show this metal at the back or front of the molecule, but they always supposed to be at the same side of the molecule. The second method for preparation of the epoxide is using halohydrin strategy. We know if we add bromine to a double bond, first we have a bromonium intermediate and then the negative bromide attack from the back side and open the ring. And finally in our product we should have bromine in two different sides. So addition of bromine to double bond is entire. When we perform this reaction, if we have water as a solvent in the reaction, then in this step, there is a competition between water and bromide to attack to this intermediate. And because the amount of water is a lot more than the bromine because it is solvent, then the chance for reaction between water and intermediate is very higher than the bromide. So normally we don't see the product of the first one. So we will see the product from addition of water to the bromonium ion. Then in our product, one of these bromine will be replaced by OH. When we have one OH and one halogen instead of double bond, we call this compound halohydrine. The hydroxy group in halohydrine is a lot more acidic rather than the regular alcohols because the bromine. Then if we react this with sodium hydroxide, this OH, this alcoholic groups in halohydrine can play the acidic role and it can react with negative OH in the sodium hydroxide. Then we have this intermediate and this intermediate, because oxygen and boromine they are on two different sides of molecule, it has a chance to perform an SN2 reaction. That we know this type of reaction as a Williamson ether synthesis. So actually we have a intramolecular Williamson ether synthesis. And we can have a epoxide ring from a double bond. Again, in this product also, oxygen attached to the ring from one side. So we should have syn addition again for our product. In halohydrine, the preference for OH is Markovnikov position. If we have asymmetric alkene, always hydroxide will attach to the more substituent carbons, like this example. So if we use, for example, bromine, we can use bromine or chlorine, then OH should attach to this carbon because it's tertiary and this is secondary. And bromine should be anti always regarding to the OH. But at the end, 
position of OH, it really doesn't matter if we want to move forward to the next step. And always, we have one epoxy ring. Thank you for watching this video. For watching more video, please subscribe our YouTube channel.